Hey everyone, I'm not going to spend too much time on this voiceover. I just wanted to uh, go over just a few things of what I am doing, especially at the beginning. So um, I am getting down as of right now, just a quick blocking, just trying to figure out where things are going to be fitting in my paper um, or on my paper. So as of right now, um, you can kind of get an idea, you can see I'm getting an idea of where to put things and placements and proportions. Um, I didn't put in the actual base of the uh, cast because I kind of had a feeling that I didn't make enough room for it and I just decided to just leave it out because I didn't want to crop it. So I think it was just best composition wise to crop it. So I'm still blocking things out, just trying to get an idea for um the overall placing of the head the overall placing um of the hair neck and also the bust uh so i'm not going to spend too much once again too much time uh in this voiceover i just want to kind of talk about a few things that i'm doing uh at the beginning that way you kind of understand my start so uh if you don't know what a block in is it's just pretty much using straight lines to kind of get the overall shape or outline of what you're actually seeing um it's kind of to me or how i use it is more in a gestured stage so um that's how i see block ins and that's how i kind of use them um and i'm pretty sure they're used for other things but that's my use for them um so as of right now i'm getting his hairline in and then you would definitely see me start to get his brow ridge in placement of nose placement of mouth um very soon i did speed up this process just a bit um but not a lot so this is not real time um because i just didn't want this video to be about an hour <laughs> i got to i'm able to get it down to about 30 minutes for you guys so it's not too boring um but as you can see i got in a line for my block in and i'm gonna start getting an idea for where my nose is mouth is and also my keystone shape which is the shape in between the eye sockets so i decided to do this video because typically my drawing students um rather their events or foundation they tend to do a cast drawn and i think cast drawings are very very important uh for drawing students um it's something you should do before you start por portraiture um, because at the end of the day, these cast these casts do not move, <laughs> so you don't have to worry too much about um, the cast moving. Human beings do move. <laughs> so as you can see, I got in my brow ridge, I got in my keystone shape. It's the shape, little triangle shape between the eye sockets. I'm trying to get my eye sockets in place um, and make sure that they are the same size on one side and the other. Technically, um, one. I think it's the left side of the cast is a little bit smaller because his head is kind of um, cocked to the side um, so I'm still trying to make sure I'm just getting the sockets in the right size that I'm seeing so out of the keystone shape is the top of the nose um, and I just typically draw that down to uh, the line of my nose So you guys, you will see certain times that I'll take breaks, not really breaks, but um, I spend a lot of time just really slowing down and being sensitive to what I'm looking at. Um, that way I can get things in the right spot. Um, so now I'm kind of cutting into my socket. I'm trying to get the lid line so I have an idea where to put uh, 
my eyelash line. I actually learned that not too long ago. I'm like, I should use that. I like that. <laughs> Lid line and eyelash line for your eyes. <laughs> Um, and another thing that I typically do for eyes, I'll draw slits so I can see um, how 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 much in width uh, the eye is before I actually start to draw in, draw in that, that little football shape that everybody does before they draw in the actual eyeball. So I'll draw in a slit, then I'll draw in an eyeball, and then I'll draw the lids over that. Um, so I, I do take my time and break things up. Once again, I tend to deconstruct, to reconstruct on my paper. Um, that's basically how drawn is simplified down to its simplest form um, and make it complex as you go. So now I think I was trying to get in um, the ball of the nose, the baseline of the nose. And the baseline is really pretty much um, the bottom of the nose and where the nose starts to turn away from light. I also um, drew in my my cast shadow on the nose. Um, sometimes those little cast shadow shapes definitely do help you with getting the drawings uh, a little bit more accurate. And if you start to render, if you already have your, your shadow shapes mapped out, um, it'll definitely help with separating light part from dark part. So although this is all linear structure, um, it's still good to think of some of those shadow shapes because they do help you in the linear form. So once again, I'm gonna try my best <laughs> not to spend too much time talking about it, um, but I just kind of want to get some of these beginning stages of what to do with this cast drawing. As you can see, I got in quickly uh, the muzzle of the mouth for the cast. And um, I tend to move around everywhere. <laughs> I don't necessarily stay in one spot all the time, but uh, as you can see, I just got it in my center line. Uh, another thing that I always try and tell young students is good to start with a center line, um, very generic at the beginning because you're just you know separating one side to the one side of the face from the other side of the face, um, and just trying to get it symmetrical. But I always try and tell my students that once you start to place eye sockets, nose, mouth, um, you want your center line to move with the planar shifts that you're placing onto the face. So. Um, you might see me move my center line around a bit. Another thing that I tend to do um, when it comes to mouth, I definitely get in the crease or get an idea what our crease is. Then I try to get the, um, the filtrum of the mouth or at least see how long that is before the top lip starts. Um, and then I start to place in um, that kind of heart shape. Uh, I know there's a technical word for it, but it's a heart shape, uh, kind of like ball of the mouth. Um, uh, where the crease starts uh, and then I start to get in some of the fatty areas of the mouth uh, or rounded areas but I always start with that crease first make sure the crease, crease is right then I get the top lid of the mouth and then the bottom of the mouth um, one thing when you're drawing a mouth uh, mouths or lips let's let's say lips <laughs> lips tend to have um, very slight planar shifts in a mainly are at the side connect, connecting to the crease for the bottom lip. Um, I typically don't ever really draw that in. I just draw in um, the bottom lip or the cast under the bottom lip and I just kind of leave it. I never connect um, the bottom lip to the top lip because I know that there's a very shallow uh, planar shift that is there so it doesn't need a very strong line there to tell the story. So as you can see, I'm placing in the ball of the chin. I eventually start to get in um, some planar shifts in our rhythm lines. I tend to flow between both of them. Um, I was trained planar shifts as well as trained uh, rhythm lines. So I pull things out when I need it, but I don't go too crazy with it. Um, but I wanted to kind of just pop in um, and just kind of talk just a little bit about my start. Now I'm just going to allow you guys just to finish out and just watch how I get through the process of uh, this cast drawing. So I will see you guys in the next video and talk to you um, in another video. But continue to watch this drawing straight through so you get an idea of how it develops and come to a completed end. Alright guys, bye.